DJ Hoppa. What's up? Uh, yeah. Andy O. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, dude. Um, so you're on the Knock Madness tour right yes. now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how's how's that going? It's going good, man. Bunch of uh, sold out shows and shit. Biggest shows we've done yet. So uh, cool. Yeah, it's been really dope. Right on. Well, uh, we'd like to welcome you to Boise. Thank you. Uh, that's awesome Hell that yeah. you're here. Uh, is it your first time here? It's not. I've been here. Uh, not sure if this is like my third, maybe my fourth time here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all all on like shows with funk volume. Awesome. What do you What do you think? Be harsh if you have to. Like I was saying, I was telling you before we started rolling, like, uh, I haven't gotten too much into the city, but the shows, like, the kids are crazy as fuck. They're turned up, shows are always super high energy, so. And now, do you usually travel by plane or bus? Both. Yeah. Both. Yeah, like, uh, we went to Australia, and we had to fly every single day, so we had to wake up at, like, four in the morning and just go to the airport, fly, because everything is, like, a 12-hour drive, so it's just too far to fucking drive, you know? So, but then on this tour, we're just in a car the whole way. Yeah. All right, well, this is where it's about to get real. These are the ones I, these are the questions that, Let's I, get real. that I really care about. So you were born and raised in San Fernando Valley. Yes, sir. Right? Um, which is really close to where you were born. Well, not born, but where you were raised, right? Where's that? Um, well, I lived in Santa Barbara for oh, a Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Valley's cool. It's like, um, it kind of gets, you know, like, it's right next to L.A. It's like a 30-minute drive. So L.A., LA loves to shit on the valley and shit on valley because it's, the, you know, kids in the valley kind of stay in the valley and then like, you know, LA is more city, but it's just a dope place to grow up. Like, I loved it and shit, so I got much love for the 818 all day. Right on. What, and what kind of effect has that like had on, on the way that you produce music and, and your, your career as an artist? Living in the valley? Growing up there. I would say, um, man, like, I had a lot of homies in the neighborhood that I grew up with and everybody was into music, man. Like all my friends. So definitely like the crowd of people I was around shaped me to, to get into music and shit. All right. This one's kind of, kind of heavy. But, uh, <laughs> so what does the word hip hop mean to you? I mean, ah, oh, dude, I grew up on hip hop. It just means like, uh, it just means being, being dope, being fresh and being individual. Like it's just, uh, expression, lifestyle, like, I'm one of the cornier dudes, like, in Funk Volume, Hobson would just be like, this fool, fucking hip-hop motherfucker, you know, because I love it, dude, I love hip-hop, so it's like, I'm definitely, like, Jaren could relate on that, too, but, uh, yeah, it's just life, man, like, really, and it's, but to me, it means, like, being individual and excelling, like, trying to always top yourself and just be fresh. Dope. All right, so this next one's kind of a two-part question. And in an interview with Underground Hip Hop Blog a couple of years back, you and Hobson spoke on uh, utilizing the internet and social media right. to initially get buzz and build hype for yourselves and right. for funk volume. Um, that was back in August of 2012, I noted. <laughs> yeah. So two years later, do you still think that the internet is a viable place for beginning artists to market their music? And would you say, uh, would you say you've seen more cats doing it as time goes on, or that it's still a widely underutilized? Resource. Oh, it's definitely utilized to the fullest now. I think everybody's like on board that like you really can excel like by just being in touch with everybody. And people want to know like, you know, to certain like degrees of how much you want to give people. Like some like some people don't like to post too much on Instagram and I never really post personal shit. It's more just like hip hop shit or beats or music or anything like that. But uh it's it's a necessity, man. It's like that's the way after a show People could be like, yo, you killed it. And I could be like, thanks, you know, and just yeah. keep it going and, and build that relationship with the fans. So with so much actual music living on the Internet nowadays and then, you know, with the level of interconnectedness it sort of brings to people, no matter where they're at, would you say that the local scene matters for independent artists anymore, wherever their local scene is? That's, that's weird because it's like, it's hard to blow up locally because everybody knows you there as just, a local like you're not really you kind of have to have a buzz for people to take you seriously locally but um i've always grinded locally i've always thrown shows in my own city and thrown mc battles and just dj to clubs because like that's where you're gonna get the realest answer you know it's just like from from the people that are either gonna fuck with you or not but it doesn't mean everything if you're not hitting locally it doesn't mean like oh i need to give up you know they don't fuck with me in la or they don't fuck with me in boise like no you can you can like find your lane and find your audience that's the most important thing it's like you know you might be pushing your music to kids that only like a certain type of hip-hop and you have a different type there's so many different lanes you know so you just got to find your audience dope 
biggest piece of advice that you'd give to uh, upcoming artists, producers or rappers? Just fucking work on your work on your music, man. Work on your craft. Um, love it. You know what I mean? Like, and just do it because you love it. Don't worry about the other shit and just stay true to that. And if it pops, dope. And if it doesn't, fuck it. You know, you stay true to what you want to do. And as long as you have fun and shit, that's all that matters. Because the day you don't want to, like, get success and then be like, shit, I don't even like what I'm doing. I don't even like these songs I'm making. Like, what did I get into? So you got to make sure you just love what you're doing no matter what. I don't know, man. Yeah. Any shout outs? Shout outs to everybody in Funk Volume. Shout outs to all the fans. Shout outs to all my homies in Broken Complex. Um, shout outs to you guys. Fucking thank you for the interview. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Huge thank you for Mar Things Entertainment, uh, City of Trees in general, and the wider 208, man. Right on. I really appreciate it. Cool.